Jungle Cruise is the new film by Disney. It's based on a ride, a lot like Pirates of the Caribbean, and The Haunted Mansion starring Eddie Murphy. I enjoyed Jungle Cruise quite a lot, significantly more than I did The Haunted Mansion, and that's because Jungle Cruise is just trying to be a fun action-adventure film. It was a lot like Indiana Jones. Instead of them being in World War II, they're in World War I. The film has a strong cast of actors, and even Dwayne Johnson managed to not be that bad. I thought Emily Blunt was good. I thought Jesse Plemons was great as the German in general. Paul Giamatti was good in his small part. The movie pays tribute to the ride in certain ways. First of all, there's a ton of animals on the ride, so there's a ton of animals in the movie. There's a whole scene where Dwayne The Rock Johnson is giving a tour and he set up a bunch of fake traps and animals or whatever. He makes a bunch of bad jokes like the tour guides do on the actual ride. There's also a kind of mystical element to this story, which is where I have to give a spoiler alert. This is your warning. If you don't want the movie spoiled for you, fast forward or click off the video. Here we go. Last chance. We follow Emily Blunt, who plays like an explorer character, trying to find these mystical kind of tree petals that can heal people. She steals an artifact from the Germans that could help her find these petals or whatever. Then she goes into the forest, and that's when she meets up with Dwayne The Rock Johnson. They go off on a jungle cruise to find the petals, and their adventure takes them through danger and waterfalls, animals. On the river, there are these conquistador ghosts that have had a curse put on them and are forced to stay in the jungle forever. Dwayne The Rock Johnson is one of these guys. He's not as rotted as the rest of them, because a few hundred years ago we put them in some kind of trap that turned them into stone or something. And it's predictable from there. They defeat the bad guys, there's a fake out sacrifice. The tone it's going for with those old school adventure serials makes it much more interesting. I was looking forward to this movie because it looked like Indiana Jones. It's definitely better than something like Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Some notable parts of the film is whenever it's switched to the film camera Emily Blunt would use to record random parts of their expedition. Stylistic choices like this one add to the movie and separate it a little bit from the other standard live action Disney movies. I saw the film in RPX and it was loud as shit. <laughs> which was great. The action sequences in this film are really well done. There was clearly a lot of thought and money put into every aspect of the film. Jesse Plemons was really good. His performance was scenery-chewing spectacle, so I'm gonna have to raise the rating a bit for that. I'd give it a 3.5 out of 5. The Green Knight is another film I saw. It's the new film by A24, and after a long-awaited release date, I finally got to see it, and I really liked it. There's plenty of symbolism and subtext throughout the movie that the audience is left to pick up on and interpret. That would require me spoiling the movie, which isn't really necessary to get the point across that it's a good movie. Even if I didn't pick up on every little detail, I was able to follow the story just fine. It's best to have your own interpretation of The Green Knight and to take in the mood of this film. Film, which is really what's most important about this piece and its unique way of telling its story. The film has sort of a dreamlike logic, especially in how it's edited and filmed. Alicia Vikander's in the film and she plays multiple parts. There's all kinds of weird imagery. The Green Knight himself is a monstrous tree. The film just takes it as it comes and doesn't really elaborate on these parts. It just hopes you accept the world of the film and are willing to go along with it. And if you are, then I thought this was a really good film. I've come to understand the critic ratings are pretty high while the audience ratings are low. And I understand why this is not an action film. It's very experimental. But that's really what I liked about it. It's a very unique film and the way in which the director told the story, it was very well done. If I had any criticisms toward the film, it would be some of the visual effects, such as the fox, which I thought looked kind of bad or the look of the giants in one scene. But overall, from a visual perspective, I thought the movie was really strong. I thought most of the time the cinematography was excellent. The movie had a really great, unique look. I thought the look of the Green Knight was great. You can tell much of this effect is practical too, which is what I really like about it. It feels like it's actually part of the scene, and it's the way they film the Green Knight and light it that makes him look real. There might have been some CGI done on his eyes or his mouth, Overall, I thought it looked cool. When the Green Knight shows up and they have the Christmas game, I think that's the best part of the movie. I see why they use this scene to sell the movie. The music is great. This film has really great editing as well. The story constantly introduces the audience to new characters and new locations to keep the story interesting. The film aims to be an experience and is trying to engross you in the world, and I think it does really work. And that's because from a visual and sound standpoint, it's so strong. The Green Knight makes a lot of bold stylistic choices that may turn some people off, but overall I think this is a really good movie and you should check it out. This leads me to the final movie I'm going to review here today, called Old. Old is a short title that has a lot of baggage attached to it. This isn't just old, this is M. Night Shyamalan's old. 
one of the most bold directors out there. His films range in quality. Even Dev Patel admits he thought he was miscast as Zuko. Luckily, Old is not nearly as bad as The Last Airbender. Old is as captivating as it is stupid. The acting for the most part is pretty bad, although that's mostly because of the logic of the story. To Shyamalan's credit, I think he makes a lot of unique choices, especially in terms of how he chooses to shoot the film. There is a moment where a character is just building a sandcastle and there's a very dramatic whip pan that evoked a laugh from the audience. This movie made me laugh a decent amount, actually, and I think that might be one of M. Night Shyamalan's strengths as a director and writer. He makes these thrillers that are actually really funny, and whether it's intentional or not, at least they're memorable and interesting. At points, the movie was so dumb that I couldn't help but laugh at it. The reveal of the rapper's name to be mid-sized sedan, the dialogue writing of the kids, M. Night Shyamalan's cameo in the movie. I can't even say it's a cameo, really. He's like a side character in the film. He's in it a lot, and he plays a major part in the story later on. The whole twist of the film was completely ridiculous. Even just the premise of the film is ridiculous. And because of how he wrote the story, it basically all takes place on this one beach. It's a bottle film. It's a one location film, which if done correctly can be really engaging. But if not, it just kind of feels like the studio is trying to save money. During a dump of exposition, they fade to show shots of the cave walls, the beach, as well as close-ups of the characters just looking about in a very corny way. And perhaps that was the point? There are lots of extreme, uncomfortable close-ups on characters during their goofiest moments. There are points in the film where the camera pans 360. This camera move just made everything blurry. While I've been mostly negative on the movie so far, there are certain characters I liked, even if I thought they were over the top. The doctor character and his wife I thought were very interesting characters. Crystal, played by Abby Lee, I thought was probably the best part of the movie. This is your warning. If you don't want the movie spoiled for you, fast forward or click off the video. The famous M. Night Shyamalan twist is that this company has constructed a resort around this beach so they can bring in medicinal patients and use experimental medicines on them, which they put in cocktails, so they can test the effects of the medicine over the lifetime of whoever is on the beach. For instance, one person has seizures, so they give her the medicine, and on the beach, she ages five years in like two hours or whatever, and they're able to see that, oh, this seizure medication works on her, because she hasn't had a seizure in five years. The whole story hinges on you believing this crap. Shyamalan is so confined to this formula and this structure. Overall, the film gets a two and a half. I meant it when I said I commend the effort. It's really entertaining at points, and I'd actually recommend you watch it if you're interested in seeing it. For an M. Night Shyamalan movie, it isn't even that bad. It's a more accessible accessible movie than The Green Knight. However, The Green Knight is a more thought-provoking and interesting film. It's actually challenging, which is not really what this movie wants to be. I'll be sure to review The Suicide Squad when it comes out. I will watch it the second it premieres on HBO Max and post the review as soon as possible.